Hi everyone, I'm Emile Stonic, editor-at-large at Bon Appetit, and this is Every Way to Cook Bacon. The word bacon can mean a whole lot of different things. Normally we think of it as coming from a pig, but it can also refer to meat that comes from a turkey or a cow. It can come from different parts of the animal, like the loin or the jowl. It can be smoked, it can be unsmoked, it can be double smoked, but today, we're working with some good old-fashioned classic American bacon. It's made from pork belly that's been cured with salt and sugar and then lightly smoked so it needs to be cooked again before eating. And we're going to cook it every way we can think of. Homemade bacon. Here we have a slab of pork belly. You can see it's got some of the skin still on, plenty of gorgeous fat, and these streaks of meat running throughout. The first step is curing. So we're gonna combine some brown sugar, some salt, and then some pink curing salt, which is a combination of good old sodium chloride, AKA salt, and sodium nitrate, which is gonna help preserve the bacon's rosy color. We're gonna rub the cure all over our pork and wrap it up tightly with plastic wrap, get it onto a sheet pan, and let this sit in the fridge for about a week. Once our bacon's cured, we're gonna take it outside to smoke it. Okay, so here we have our cured pork belly. Now it's time to pop it in the smoker and finish it off. So our bacon has been smoking for about an hour and a half. Let's take a look. Ooh, smoky. That looks like bacon all right. As you can see, the color of the pork belly has really changed. The meat has gone from a flabby pinkish gray to this darker red, and the fat has taken on a slightly more yellow color. We're gonna remove that skin because it's a little bit too tough for us to eat. I'm just gonna cut a few nice slices of this. So what we have here is our homemade bacon. This is still raw. We need to cook it again in order to eat it. And since we have our smoker all ready to go, we're gonna go ahead and smoke a few of these pieces of bacon a second time so they're fully edible. Double smoked bacon. One smoked bacon about to become twice smoked bacon. We're gonna check on this in about a half an hour. That should do it. So here we have our homemade twice smoked bacon. As you can see, the vet didn't render out too much at such a low heat, and the meat is even pinker than it was before. Hmm. Well, it's almost hard to taste anything else because it's so smoky. You've got a fair amount of meaty chew because we cut these slices pretty thick, and the flavor is outstanding, delicious. Let's go back to the kitchen and get to work. Cold start bacon. We've got some bacon. We've got a cast iron pan that's cold right now. We're gonna lay these strips of bacon into the cast iron pan, set the heat to medium, and let that go until these crisp up. Mmm, crispy. So we've got nice, even browning on both sides, a fair amount of fat rendered so it's nice and crispy. It just snaps. Mmm. Great caramelization and crunch really meaty, not too greasy. This is a really easy, foolproof way to make bacon on the stovetop with a minimum of mess and fuss. Hot start bacon. We're gonna lay our bacon into a preheated pan now, and you can tell it's immediately starting to sizzle. Ooh, it's getting a little smoky. All right, that should be done. So one thing you'll notice is that the fat didn't render quite as evenly as our cold start version did, and that's because we didn't get any of that low heat time. It's definitely less crispy, but not bad looking. Mmm. It's definitely on the chewier side and fattier tasting for sure. I I'm not mad at it. The real bummer was how smoky and splattery this method is. So I think starting from cold is definitely the way to go. Low and slow bacon. This time, we're gonna put our bacon in a cold cast iron again, but we're gonna turn the heat to very low and really take our time with it. Maybe I'll have time for a quick nap. Oops, almost forgot to flip. There we go. So right off the bat, we can see that there's some pieces that rendered and crisp a little bit less evenly. It's a little bit floppy here, crispier there. Mm. It's still tasty, but going even lower and slower didn't make for a more evenly cooked piece of bacon. The up from cold medium is definitely the sweet spot. Bacon lardons. So lardons are basically just Frenchified bacon bits. We have three thick strips of bacon, and we're gonna cut these into roughly quarter inch thick batons, and then we're gonna cook them over medium to medium low heat until they're nicely browned, but not too, too rendered. We want a little bit of chew there. Voila, lardons. Browning rather than crisping is kind of the thing here, and the fat isn't aggressively rendered. Mmm, great caramelization, tons of Maillard flavors, but not overly crispy with plenty of meaty chew. Bacon toaster. It's a toaster, but only for bacon. What a world we live in. We just have to open this thing up, lay our strips on there. Ooh, sizzly. Close the pod bay doors and push the button. Okay, let's check this out. Wow, that's really something. 
This looks terrible. We pulled it because the edges were kind of starting to burn and the rest is nowhere near done. It's all over the place. Hmm. Yeah, honestly, I'm mad about this one. How could something made explicitly for cooking bacon be so bad at cooking bacon? It's not faster or more convenient or better. What a shame. Curling iron bacon. For the record, I don't get hair and makeup for this show, but the bacon does. Oh, it's sizzling. You know, it's actually pretty disturbing to me that this is working. People are cooking their hair. If this were a hair, I would say that it did a pretty good job. We've got a nice tight curl here, but aside from a few bits here and there, it doesn't seem all that cooked after all. It's kind of I'm kind of nervous about eating it actually. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's bacon, but it hasn't cooked in any particularly appealing way. I'm going to pass on this one. Crimping iron bacon. Well, the curling iron was kind of a bust, but we're gonna try our luck with a crimper. It doesn't really fit into this thing all at once, so we're gonna have to just do a few inches at a time. Okay, I guess that's done. So, it's definitely mostly cooked, and we do have a little bit of browning here. Hmm, not particularly crispy or well cooked, but if you're gonna cook bacon at the salon, this may be your best bet. You know. It's starting to smell like burning plastic in here. Let's take a breather outside. Campfire bacon, three ways. We're gonna take these two strips and put them right here on the coals. Then we've got a tin foil envelope with some bacon in it and put it right over here. And then we're gonna dangle these three strips right over the flames and take them all off as they're ready. Ooh, yeah, that's on fire. Okay, let's get those off. That foil packet should be done by now. And let's try to get these guys off. Ooh, okay, all done. Coal cooked bacon. So obviously bacon and direct open flame do not really mix. There's just so much fat and it really pretty much just caught on fire in there. So it's burnt and sooty on one side and kind of barely cooked on the other. Mm, ugh, yuck. It's really bitter and sooty and unpleasant. You can barely taste the bacon, gross. Foil packed bacon. You know, all things considered, this doesn't look that bad. We had some light browning, but it also didn't render much. It kind of steamed up in there a bit, and it didn't brown at all where the pieces overlapped. Mmm. Yeah, not terrible, but nothing to write home about either. Clothesline bacon. So this is a mess. I'm not sure why we thought this was gonna work. This part up here is just sooty, but pretty much raw, and this part is just burnt, and I'm not sure if it's actually cooked at all. This doesn't seem safe. I mean, this is pretty much the only piece that I can, I'm not gonna do it. Sorry, let's go back inside. It's getting weird out here. Baked bacon, oven time. We got some bacon on a parchment lined sheet pan and we're gonna bake it at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. That looks good. This oven bacon is really consistent. It looks well done without being dry and it's nice and crispy. Mm. To me, this is the platonic ideal of bacon. Crunchy, still a little bit of give, just the right amount of fat rendered out. I mean, if you ask me, this is the most convenient way to cook a large quantity of bacon in one go. And the parchment makes cleanup a breeze. This is a win. Rack baked bacon. Okay, same thing, but on a wire rack this time. 400 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. Ooh, it looks good. So one thing you'll notice here is that it does feel like it's slightly more even, which probably has to do with the way the air was able to circulate all around the slices. Hmm, yeah, really crispy, nicely rendered, pretty much perfect. It's a real toss up between this and the parchment version, but the latter is definitely easier to clean up. Broiled bacon. All right, same thing, but under the broiler this time. Ooh, gotta pull this, it's starting to smoke. Uh, broiled bacon, everybody. You know, I'm not liking what I'm seeing. We've got this burning around the edges, which is why we had to pull it. But other than that, it definitely seems a little bit less cooked than we want, and it's not particularly crisp. Mm. Yeah, there's some bitterness from the singed edges, and not caramelized or crispy. Yeah, broiler is a no-go. Bacon doesn't like high, high direct heat. Diner-style bacon. Now we're gonna take a page out of the Short Order Cook's Handbook. We've got six slices of bacon here that we've submerged in a little bit of neutral oil in this baking dish. And we're gonna put that under the broiler for a few minutes until it's fully cooked. Now, we're gonna take our fully cooked slices and lay them onto this cast iron griddle and then weigh them down with this hot press. These should be ready in no time at all. Order up. The pieces really shrunk up and they took on some really appealing color, very dark and consistent. Mm. 
great crunch with just the faintest amount of chew. This is exactly what I want on a BLT. This is a great method if you're making a ton of bacon to order, but probably doesn't make all that much sense at home. Oven contraption bacon. Okay, we got this metal thingy. It kind of looks like a dishwasher rack and we're gonna cook bacon with it. Into the oven. All right, let's check it out. The slices actually do look pretty nice. Great shape, you've got that kind of iconic wavy thing going on and the color is pretty perfect, but there's definitely some flexibility in there. Mm. I mean, I don't think that it's better than our baked on parchment version and I really don't wanna have to clean that gadget, but it definitely works. Bacon bowl. First, we're gonna take one of these strips and cut it in half. We're gonna layer it over this mold, which is specifically made for making bacon bowls. Now we're gonna bake it until the bacon fuses together and gets all crispy. Well, that's something all right. I mean, it didn't not work. It's a bowl all right. Hmm, yeah, I mean, it tastes like bacon that's cooked. It's definitely a gimmick, but a cool gimmick? Bacon straw. We made a bowl, let's try a straw. We're gonna take our bacon and wrap it around this stainless steel straw, Ooh, slippery. Now we're gonna take our bacon straws to be and put them in the oven until they're cooked and crispy. Now that our bacon straws have cooled, we can slip them off these stainless steel boys. Very impressive, good caramelization and they held their shape pretty well too. A little worried about how bendy they are though. Hmm, yep, I mean, I know that flavor anywhere. No surprises here, but will they work as a straw? Only one way to find out. They hold water, people. The perfect non-plastic straw does exist. Prince Harry's bacon. So apparently, Prince Harry went to Disney World when he was a kid, loved the bacon that he was served there, and insisted that the royal chef cook it in a very specific way from now on. First, it gets put under the broiler, and now that it's partially cooked, but still plenty floppy and oily, it gets cooked again in a very unroyal way. Cheerio, bacon fit for a king, or prince. Okay, thoroughly caramelized, handsomely rendered. It's pretty crispy, but it has a little more flex than I would hope for. Hmm, you know, it's good, but it's actually a bit tough. It's not as crispy as some of our other methods and more work. This is me officially questioning the royal taste. Microwaved bacon. Okay, let's cut the oven out of the equation. We're gonna take our bacon, layer it between a few pieces of paper towel, and pop it in the old science box for three minutes. Easy does it, okay. So fans of the show will know that I have very little love for the microwave, but this actually looks pretty perfect. Mm, damn, that's a good piece of bacon. Could be a hair crispier, but it took three minutes and there was pretty much zero cleanup, so what's not to like? Wow, bacon. Now we're gonna use this gadget called the Wow Bacon, which kinda looks like a Brita filter, but apparently it cooks bacon. Pop it in the microwave and set it for three minutes. Wow, that is something. This kinda looks like a dorm shower in a horror movie. It's all kinda misty and foggy, and then there are these pieces of dangling meat. Mm. Yeah, not bad, but also, why? Plastic tray bacon. Yet another microwave device. We're gonna lay our strips down and cook it for two minutes and 45 seconds. Okay. Well, more bacon cooked in trash. It looks really wrecked up. I don't know what happened here. It looks weirdly burnt, but isn't crispy and also smells like melting plastic. Oh, oh something is very wrong here. It's like it steamed and fried and also tastes like chemicals. Bacon wave. But wait, there's more. God, this instruction manual is a little bewildering. We're gonna weave our strips into the bacon wave, secure them with these plastic pegs, which I guess keep the bacon from falling down. Okay, into the box it goes. Wow, all right then. So it seems like these pieces kind of popped right off of the peg and shrunk up so much for keeping their shape. Strong melting plastic smell, borderline burnt bacon. Mm. I mean, it's plenty crispy. The weird plasticky aftertaste is a serious disqualifier. The microwave works. Why do you have to make it more complicated? Bacon butter. We've cooked a whole lot of bacon so far, which means we've produced a whole lot of bacon fat, which we've been saving because there are a lot of great things that you can do with it. First, we're gonna make some bacon butter. We're gonna take some warm bacon fat, strain it to get any bits out, and then we're gonna fridge it until it firms up. 
Now that it's more solid, we're gonna get it onto this plastic wrap, fold it over, and tighten it to form a cute little torsion. Voila! So clearly bacon butter is just a nice way of saying bacon fat, but it's not the worst rebrand in history. It's very soft, softer than butter even, and has this milky, pale sort of color. Mm. Yep, that's uh, pork fat all right. You get some of the smoke and salt and sugar, but it's not overwhelming. Obviously, it's not much on its own, but I'd gladly use this like butter in, say, a grilled cheese. Yum. Bacon mayonnaise. We've got an egg yolk, a little bit of Dijon mustard, some lemon juice. It's really hard to make a mayonnaise with all bacon fat, so we're gonna start with vegetable oil, adding it a little bit at a time until the emulsion forms. And then finally whisk in our bacon fat and hit it with plenty of salt. And there's our bacon fat mayo. All right, let's get this jar open. It, it's a little darker than your standard mayo and it's got a nice gelatinous consistency. Mmm. You know, that mustard and lemon and salt really bumped up the bacon flavor. I'm really tasting it. This would make for the best BLT ever. Bacon caramels. We're gonna get some bacon fat into this small pot with some cream and get the heat going under that. Combine some corn syrup, water, sugar, and salt in this pan and cook that until everything dissolves and we get a nice amber color going. We're gonna whisk in our bacon cream mixture and then get a candy thermometer in there until it gets up to 230 degrees. Transfer it to a greased and parchment lined loaf pan, hit it with some flaky salt, and then we're gonna let this cool. Porky bonbons. These look so cute and feel nice and pliable. They smell a little bit bacony. Mmm, you know, honestly, it doesn't taste that strongly of bacon. It's just like a really good salted caramel with a little bit of a smoky, porky aftertaste, which is probably a good thing. Bacon bourbon. Hold on to your hats, folks. We're making bacon-infused bourbon. First, we gotta pour some of this out. It's two o'clock somewhere, right? Then, we're gonna pour in our bacon fat, get to the last drop, put our lid on, and shake it up real good. Then, we're gonna let this hang out for a few days and come back to it. Okay, we refrigerated this for a few hours just now so the fat would become solid and rise to the top. Now we're gonna pour it through a coffee filter to clarify it. Looks good, bottoms up. So it just looks like regular bourbon. There's nothing floating around in there, which is a good thing. It definitely smells like there's something kind of a little bit smoky, a little bit fatty going on. Whoa. The flavor isn't super strong, but there's a rich round quality and definitely a bit of smoke. You know what, let's take this one step further and get our handy dandy bacon straw. Well, that worked better than I thought it would, and it definitely tastes baconier that way, though I'm not sure that's a good thing or not. Yeah. Water method bacon. We're gonna lay these slices down in this cold cast iron pan, and then we're gonna add just enough water to cover the bacon. Now, we're gonna crank the heat and come back when the water is fully boiling. Okay, so now that most of the liquid has evaporated, we're gonna turn down the heat and finish it off. Give it a flip and done. So I'm seeing some bits at the ends of the strips that didn't take on any color. And while the pieces look fairly crisp, there's more than a little flex to them. Mmm, totally fine. Could be a lot crunchier. I just don't think that the pre-cooking in water added anything to the equation. Poached bacon. Well, we kind of have to, right? We've got a pan of simmering water here. We're gonna lay our strips in there. Oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, and there we have our poached bacon. As you can see, it's totally floppy. The fat seems to be the thing that changed the most texture-wise. They're pretty stringy. Mmm. You know, even though I'm not getting any of the browned, crispy, crunchy flavors I associate with bacon, it's definitely pretty interesting. It's chewy, but not in a bad way, and it did lose some flavor in the water, I think. I'm trying to keep an open mind here. Steamed bacon. We're gonna open this bad boy up, put our pieces right in there, close the lid, and come back when it's finished. I guess that looks done. So very similar looking to our poached bacon, no color, although some of these pieces have a slightly brighter pink color, but yeah, floppy town USA. Hmm, 
Again, not what most people think of when they think of breakfast bacon, but it has more flavor than the poached bacon did. Car engine bacon. Uh, all right. We got some bacon. We got a hot car engine. We're gonna wrap this bacon up in foil and slide it right into this little crevice here, and hopefully the bacon will cook. Okay, it's been 45 minutes. We're gonna call it. You know, it's kind of hard to tell whether it's cooked or not. There's definitely some liquid that came out and some fat that rendered. It's kind of warm and it's kind of changed shape a little bit. I'm feeling very nervous about whether or not this is going to poison me, but I'll give it a try anyways. Um, yeah, I probably shouldn't have done that. This bacon is barely, hardly cooked. That was unwise. Let's take this party back inside. Bacon jam. We're gonna chop our bacon up nice and fine, cook it in this nonstick skillet until it's browned and rendered somewhat, spoon off some of that fat, add some diced onion, and once that's golden, some brown sugar, a smidge of vinegar, and let that cook for a half an hour until it's nice and saucy. Transfer it to our jar, and we've got our bacon jam. I'm gonna open this bad boy up. This looks really cool. We basically turned our bacon and onion mixture into kind of a caramel. It's a little sticky, a little oily. Mmm, it's so good. The dark caramel flavors really play nice with the fat and the smoke. Big umami energy. This would be a killer addition to a burger or a cheese plate or something like that. Candied bacon. This one's easy enough. We're gonna rub our strips down with brown sugar, hit them with some black pepper, do the same to the other side, and then pop this in the oven at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes. Ooh, glossy. We got a little bit of burning around the edges because of all that added sugar, but these pieces look really pretty. Mmm, delicious. I mean, I generally think bacon desserts are kind of gimmicky, but the whole sugar, fat, salt, smoke thing always hits. Bacon ice cream. Well, you can't make bacon ice cream without making a bacon creme anglaise. We're gonna add cream, milk, butter, and bacon fat to this saucepan, bring that up to a simmer over medium heat. While that's working, we've got some egg yolks, sugar, and a pinch of salt, and we're gonna whisk them together until they're light and fluffy. Now that our dairy's hot, we're gonna add it a bit at a time to our eggs to temper them, and then whisk it all in until it's smooth. Then we're gonna transfer this back to our saucepan, cook it just until it's thick, and then strain it to make sure it's smooth. We're gonna let this cool down in the fridge until it's cold and thick. Okay, now that our ice cream base is chilled, we're gonna pour it into this ice cream machine and let her rip. Now that it's almost finished, we're gonna add some bacon bits, you know, for texture, and let that finish freezing. Now, we're gonna scrape it into this loaf pan, top it with more bacon bits, and cover it in plastic, and then let it freeze solid overnight. All right, our bacon ice cream is ready to go, and while we could build our sundae in a regular bowl, why not in a bacon bowl? Ta-da, the porkiest sundae that ever was. Not sure how I feel about cold bacon, but here goes nothing. Wow. Very bacony, very salty, good chew from the bacon bits. You know, this is actually way better than I thought, but I don't think I could eat more than one small scoop personally. Let's get a little fresh air, shall we? Grilled bacon, two ways. This side of the grill is good and hot, and this one over here is on very low. We're gonna oil our grill grates first, then lay our slices down carefully, close the lid, and come back to flip. We're just gonna take these off as they're ready. High heat grilled bacon. Flare ups are always an issue with something this fatty, so we got a bit of charring in addition to a few spots that could have definitely cooked a little longer. Mmm. Definitely on the chewier side, but the grilled flavor is really killer. It can be tricky to grill bacon properly without setting something on fire. This tastes great. Low heat grilled bacon. So, our low and slow grilled bacon definitely cooked more evenly, and there was more time for the fat to slowly render, so the pieces shrunk a bit more. Definitely crispier. Mmm. Actually, a bit more grill flavor since it had more time over heat, and the texture is really cool. I prefer this to the hot and fast bacon, honestly. Skewered bacon. Now, we have a couple of skewers that we've threaded strips of bacon onto, and we're gonna grill these over medium-low heat, turning them every once in a while. Mmm, that smells so good. Loving the crisping and browning around the edges, and there's definitely some contrast between the peaks and valleys of these folds. This wavy texture is really cool. Mmm, loving the grill flavor and the variety of textures. I'd love this even more with a soy sugar glaze of some sort. Really cool. 
Searsall bacon. We got our bacon. We got our Searsall, which is basically just a modified blowtorch, and we're gonna cook it all the way through with this. This is gonna take a minute. Well, good enough for who it's for. As we've seen before, high direct heat does weird things to bacon. These slices are kind of singed and all seized up, but not rendered nicely or even browned, really. Mm, really chewy and definitely cooked, but not all that much going on. It's cold out here. I'm ready to head back inside. George Foreman bacon. We're gonna lay our strips down, shut it, and let it do its thing. That looks done to me. We've got these cooked but still chewy looking bits here, and then these borderline burnt parts here. Yeah, that part's kind of on the edge crispy, and that's more cooked but chewy and tastes kind of hammy. I can't recommend it. Air fryer bacon. I cannot even tell you how sick I am of this air fryer. It dinged, guess it's ready. I'm already unimpressed. So the bacon took on decent color, but the fan that blows around in there folded the pieces onto themselves, which didn't help matters. It's hardly crispy. Mmm, yeah, not getting the crunch I'm after. This one's a bust. Waffle iron bacon. So we're gonna place our strips in a little lattice and let's call it there. So yeah, pretty uneven. Mmm, yeah, the crispy bits are crispy, the chewy bits are chewy. I just can't think of any real reason to cook bacon this way, to be honest. Powdered bacon. All right, we have our dehydrator. We have three strips of fully cooked bacon and let this go at a low temperature overnight. That looks very dry. Now I'm gonna break these strips into a few pieces, put them in our spice grinder, close it and buzz it up. That's bacon powder. It definitely feels a little bit tacky. It's not as free flowing as you might want it to be for a powder sort of application. Mm. Oh, well, it has kind of a burnt egg aftertaste. Not good at all. Stir fried bacon. Okay, gonna cut these into one inch pieces, get a little oil into our smoking hot wok. In goes the bacon, we keep things moving. Just a minute, stir fried bacon. We're looking at some pieces here that are more cooked than others, but it smells great. This feels completely different from our other methods. Mm, that's actually delicious. There's so much of that smoky wok flavor, which really complements the bacon's natural characteristics, and the chew is really appealing in this context. This would be a great jumping off point for some stir-fried Chinese broccoli or bacon fried rice or something like that. Yum. Deep fried bacon. Bacon, meat bubbling pot of hot oil. Well, it's definitely working. I think we gotta pull it. This cooked crazy quickly, but the pieces curled up in a really weird way that I'm not really happy with. Even color all around, and it's really crispy. Mm. Love the texture, but the fry oil seems to have dulled the flavor somewhat, and it's kinda greasy. Not bad, but deep frying at home is a pain. Bacon bits. We're gonna line up our strips and cut them into the smallest pieces possible. Lower those gently into some hot oil and homemade bacon bits. Crispy bits of bacon confetti. I want a baked potato. You've definitely got some distinct pieces of meat and fat mixed in here. Ah, forget it, I'm just gonna use my hands. Mm, I really feel like I'm tasting the fry oil here. I kind of wish I just cooked the bacon in a cast iron pan and chopped them up afterwards. Country fried bacon. We've got some all-purpose flour and beaten egg here. I'm just gonna season each one with a little bit of salt, and then we're gonna dredge our bacon in flour, then egg, then back into the flour, and then carefully place it into the hot oil. Repeat with the rest of our bacon, and take them out when they're golden brown. And that, my friends, is country fried bacon. So just like a country fried steak, it kind of has this nice, puffy, crispy exterior, which looks really nice, but the bacon inside itself is not crispy at all. It smells really good. Mm. You know, with the breading, it kind of tastes like a bacon donut or something like that. More country fair novelty than anything else, but not bad at all. All right, we cooked bacon just about every way we could think of. What did we learn? Well, for one, we learned that lower and less direct forms of heat are the key to maximizing bacon's crispiest, crunchiest potential. But also that, in some cases, a little chew isn't a bad thing. And while there are a whole lot of bacon-specific gadgets out there, none of them produced a product that was better than any of our straightforward methods, and were often a whole lot worse. 
Have a favorite method that you didn't see here today? Drop it in the comments.